Good afternoon and welcome to WJB. This is the Presidential Community News from the Hill. And joining us once again for this month, the month of April, Dr. Hugini, the 11th president of Alabama A&M University. And good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon to you, Ms. Fox. We're glad to have you back here and a lot to catch up on and to also preview. Let's talk about the success of the day of service. It was huge for the students here at A&M. It, it certainly was, and we are, we are just so proud of our students. Uh, as you are aware, our motto here is service to sovereignty, and they have actually taken that to a whole new level. We had over 1,500 students involved in uh, the service component that day. Uh, they touched every aspect of the city and certainly made an impact, and we uh, want to commend them. I did an open letter to all of our students uh, acknowledging what they had done and thanking them for the service they provided. Earlier we uh, had a day that we spent uh, with, with uh, administrators, faculty, uh, some students as well working on a Habitat for Humanity mm -hmm. um, house. So we have been quite engaged in, uh, in service uh, and definitely demonstrated the service is sovereignty. So uh, again, hats off to our students, hats off to uh, the Freshman Academy, uh, Ms. Monica Clark, for the leadership that she provided uh, in, in doing that. And we look to continue that each year to have it to grow more and more until we get really all of our students uh, involved in providing service to our great community. I love that, living up to our motto. I think that's paramount and that's important, especially for people to see that we do take care of business and going out and partnering and making relationships and working with people out in the community and especially students need community service hours they do they do um, not only the hours but it also provides them experience and something else that they can add on their resume as they are looking for for employment people like to see that that individuals give back mm -hmm. most definitely now that was on April 1st and I'm going to kind of skip over the ribbon cuttings first and let's talk about Honors Day. We're talking about our students, of course, and how well they are excelling in their, uh, their studies and their homework and their grades. How did you feel about Honors Day this year? Great. Um, we love the opportunity of recognizing academic excellence, and that program provides that venue to do that. Uh, some years ago, uh, we wanted to, to do something that would really take it to um, a, a different plateau mm -hmm. and so we designed um, the medals so the medals are very similar to what you would get in the Olympics so for the top uh, performing students uh, those students are known as our gold recipients and mm -hmm. then we have our silver and then we have our bronze and so I have the honor and distinction and pleasure of, of putting that gold medallion or the silver or the bronze medallion on each of the recipients as they pass through. And so students look forward each year to, uh, to receiving one of those. Mm -hmm. And of course we have the Dean's uh, List recipients as well as our honor roll students. And then we acknowledge the top performing students from each of our colleges. So each of the college there will be a top performing student. Uh, at this university we uh, emphasize that we have student athletes. And so in addition to each of the colleges, we also identify uh, the top performing athlete. This year, it was uh, Twin Sisters that mm -hmm. received that, uh, that distinction. And so again, great program. Uh, we want to always be sure that we are placing the recognition of academic excellence on the same plane as we do other activities here at the university. Any thoughts of adding graduate students to these honor roll and dean's list? I'd love to have a gold medallion. <laughs> uh, the possibility always exists. I mean, we really had not given it much thought, but we certainly will um, keep, take that under consideration and, and see what we can do about including graduate students. Mm -hmm. Because graduate students are significant. They, they represent about 25% of the student population here at the university, and, and we want them to know that uh, they are part of the university, and, and, and what they do is just as important as the undergraduate students. Mm -hmm. You talk about student athletes and our basketball program moving forward and, and moving on where we have a new basketball coach. What are your thoughts on Coach Marsh? We are very excited and we are pleased to welcome him to uh, Alabama A&M University. Uh, he certainly comes with a, a breadth of experience uh, for the university having 
uh, of course, uh, coached at different levels and with different institutions. Mm -hmm. uh, he comes to us from Texas Southern, and of course, we know that Texas Southern has kind of dominated basketball uh, in the last couple of years, and so we hope that some of that uh, domination will transfer here to, to Alabama A&M University, but he comes highly recommended, and we are excited and look forward to uh, the opening of the basketball season uh, uh, under Coach Marsh. Almost like you want to skip football. Let's see what can happen with basketball, especially the day after his press conference. He said the team had practice at 6 a.m., and I was like, oh, my, he's not missing a beat. He's very, he's very, very serious. But we don't want to skip over football. We no. will we'll let everything in its own way, and uh, we'll get to the season. Uh, again, we're very excited, but we're going to have a great football season as well. So we're, we're uh, thinking this year is going to, going to turn things around for us. Yeah, Coach Spady is working really hard with his students, and the uh, maroon and white game is coming up as well, so we look forward to that. Black tie gate. Well, let's go back to the ribbon cuttings. We have some wonderful things happening or continuing to happen here on campus and growth. Talk about the ribbon cutting ceremonies that took place. We are continuing to implement our master plan. Um, and the master plan includes uh, not only the construction of the new residence halls that we're looking forward to opening in the spring of, of next uh, academic year. But in addition to that, we, we have some beautiful structures on our campus and we want to uh, to utilize those structures. We want to repurpose those that we can. And so uh, we have taken three structures, beginning with Council Hall. Council Hall was a residence hall for women. Mm -hmm. uh, we have repurposed that now and is going to be used for student support services. So we have our TRIO programs there. We have retention and persistence there. And we also have the Confucius Institute. Mm -hmm. uh, we spent about a million dollars in upgrading that. And the basement is uh, support for our TAN, which is the tutor tutorial uh, uh, network and mm -hmm. so we are, are pleased uh, that we, we have that wonderful facility and we wanted to celebrate and so to celebrate we had a ribbon cutting for that facility. Mm -hmm. uh, we also had a ribbon cutting for our science building, uh, uh, Carter Hall. Uh, and spent about five million dollars there. Uh, we of course did a new HVAC system and a new roof. We did uh, work to the uh, interior in terms of classrooms and office space, uh, new windows, and so it's a it's a beautiful building. Faculty and students are very very satisfied and pleased that we've been ab able to upgrade that facility. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the third is our Ralph Lee Building, uh, which is our student union building on the campus. Uh, spent about a million dollars there, and um, a lot of the work was in the game room. So the game room is an exciting place <laughs> to be is. now. I mean, uh -huh. you've got uh, vintage games and uh, different little games that you can uh, spend your time um, enjoying the uh, relaxation that we hope the students will have in, a, in that kind of environment. So we were excited about the fact that we were able to pull together the resources in order to upgrade facilities we have. We still have a very, very long way to go. Mm -hmm. uh, we probably need something in the excess of $300 million to really bring the campus up to what we'd like it to be for uh, today and for the future. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's going to require a significant investment from the state of Alabama. Um, it's not going to happen until we are able to get a bond referendum, mm -hmm. and that bond will then, the proceeds from that could be used to upgrade facilities. Uh, we're trying to do it with the meager resources that we have, but um, chopping along and, you know, as if, if you've got an aging facility, it continues to age. Right. And, and so uh, while you may have something planned, you then have to reallocate those resources to go back and do something that you didn't anticipate um, occurring. Mm -hmm. And so it's, uh, it's an endless battle unless we can get that significant infusion of dollars to make a difference going forward. Is that something you have to wait for for the n next new governor that is elected, or is that something that – possibly can happen with uh, Kay Ivey as the interim governor? It can happen uh, at any time. It's just rather the uh the governor, the legislator come together and decide that uh, a bond referendum, and we're not saying a bond referendum for Alabama A&M only. This is a bond referendum for education okay. uh, in the entire state. Um, as I travel throughout the state with our presidential bus tour, there's a need for improvement in, in our high schools, for new high schools. Uh, there's a need for uh, improvement, of course, here. Other campuses will tell you the same thing. So it's it's not just this uh, university that's affected. It's the entire state of Alabama. Mm -hmm. And that's why we really encourage the legislature and the governor to come together and to do a significant bond referendum that will give us the proceeds that we need to uh, make our campus ready for uh, the 21st century and beyond. 
So how do you make them buy into that? Well, it's it's an effort on the part of all of us. Um, mm-hmm. Those of us that know members of the legislature to have that conversation with them. Okay. Uh, we have students on the campus. Um, they have the ability of, of talking to the legislators back at home. Uh, we have alumni throughout the state. And they have the ability of touching those persons. And so if each of us uh, reach out, uh, but again, it's not only Alabama A&M, but right. all of the alumni of all of the institution, all the students of all of the institutions and the parents coming together and saying to the elected officials, this is a priority, this is something that you need to do, uh, we'll get it done. Uh, so I think that's the way we have to approach it. Interesting. I know social media is, is a powerful thing. It is. And it is. maybe just putting just a, a message out there, hey, go talk to your legislator in your area, your district and put the bug in their ear that we need a bond referendum for the entire state. And hopefully it will resonate. I might just do that this evening. Yes. We shall see. All right, let's move forward to the Black Tie Gala. We talked with Mr. Archie Tucker, Vice President of Marketing, Communications, and Advancement. That area spearheads the Black Tie Gala. I know you're excited about this. You get a big kick out of it. I do. It, it's one of those uh, uh, fun uh, programs that we look forward to every year. It, it's it's fun because it's entertainment. You have a wonderful evening of entertainment as well as a wonderful meal. But what's what to me the real uh, greatness of that program is that we have the opportunity to hear from our students. Mm-hmm. You get a chance to see what your dollars are doing at work, the mm-hmm. investment that you're making uh, into our students. And so they will be on on parade that night. We'll have a chance to hear from our students. Uh, for the first time this year, I think as Mr. Tucker probably had said when he had the interview, our students will be actually presiding. So they will be the 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 uh, mistress and master of ceremony mm-hmm. uh, this year. And so that, that's a different little twist uh, we have. And, of course, Alvin Garrett is going to be providing the entertainment. Mm-hmm. A couple of years ago we started with entertainment, and now there's an expectation we're going to have entertainment each year as a part <laughs> yes. of, the, uh, of the gala. So we'll, mm-hmm. we'll have that. And then we'll have a special announcement uh, related to our capital campaign. Pain mm-hmm. uh, that will take place uh, at the at the gala, and so we we have some surprises in mind. Uh, we don't want to share those right now, but um, you'll find that uh, that information related to the camp- campaign to be uh, a little different, mm-hmm. a little different than what mm-hmm. you anticipate. So we're looking for a lively evening, an uh, informative evening, uh, and a time that we can celebrate the great accomplishment of uh, this capital campaign. Well, you're very student friendly. I've always felt that, and and you always say that they are our best customer, and I love that we give back to them through the scholarships. And we do want people to get tickets or buy a table, and there's still time. And I then call two five six three seven two eight three four four to get that information. Again, that's the 17th annual Black Tie Gala on April 28th. This is the Presidential Community News from the Hill here on WJAB, and I'm talking with our 11th president of Alabama A&M University, Dr. Andrew Higgini, Jr. And coming up in a couple weeks, some huge events, and a lot of them on one day, so it's a full day, and we're talking about Founders Day and commencement and your breakfast, so it starts off with your breakfast. Uh, yes, that day, May 5th, is when we tell people to get a lot of rest the day before because <laughs> it's going to be a long day. But we think it makes sense to try and, co- and, and, and coordinate all of these as opposed to trying to do these functions at different times. Time. So we begin with the uh, President's Community Breakfast. Uh, this is an outreach to the faith community. We understand the significance and the need for the support from the faith community. And so this allows us to uh, you know, have the ministers and their uh, guests to come and to be a part of the, uh, of the university. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we have a speaker each year. And this year we were having um, Bishop uh, Harry Seawright. Uh, bishop Seawright is the uh, presiding bishop for the Ninth Episcopal District of the AME Church, the African Methodist Episcopal Church, of, which is of the state of Alabama. Mm-hmm. Uh, why that's significant is because uh, those that understand the history know that our founder, Dr. William Hooper Council, was an ordained itinerant elder, which means he was a minister in the African Methodist Episcopal Church and one of the founders of St. John AME Church. Mm-hmm. And so whenever a new bishop comes to uh, the Episcopal District, we certainly like to invite uh, that bishop uh, to come and, and provide the uh, 
be the speaker for that program. Mm -hmm. uh, some years ago, we had Bishop Davis, um, who was our bishop at that time. Of course, he's moved now to another Episcopal district, and uh, Bishop Seawright uh, is coming. So the first thing we did, as soon as we realized that he was appointed, we extended the invitation, and we do expect him to, uh, to be present. In addition to that, we uh, instituted the Morrison Award, and so we have identified the recipients for the Morrison Award this year. Uh, one recipient is Attorney Bostani. Attorney Bostani has been has served the university for 10 years on our board of directors for the foundation, um, and so we thought that was a uh, something that worthy was worthy of note, mm -hmm. and we'll be recognizing her. The other person that we're going to recognize this year is Dr. Um, Richard Showers. Okay. Dr. Showers, of course, was the first African American elected to uh, the City Council of Huntsville, mm -hmm. and of course is a graduate of the university as well, and so he will be the other recipient for our uh, president's Morrison Award that mm -hmm. will be given during the uh, president's um, breakfast. And then from there, we'll move to Founders Day, and at Founders Day, Mrs. Uh, Pamela McDonald will be our speaker for Founders Day. Uh, Ms. McDonald uh, was the individual that was instrumental in coordinating and leading the effort uh, for the significant contribution of $150,000 that uh, the Deltas, who were graduates of Alabama a and University, uh, gave to the, to the institution. Um, it is my belief uh, that I want persons speaking on Founders Day that have demonstrated uh, their support for the university. Uh, we, so we've always tried to find those individuals that um, have actually translated their love for Alabama A&M University in a tangible way uh, through resources that will enable us to support our students. And so Ms. McDonald will be our speaker. And from there we will have our graveside ceremony, um, as we've had each year. And then our commencement. Commencement will take place um, at the Von Braun Center. Uh, and this year we are having uh, Ms. Rooker, um, Shanavia Rooker, who is a graduate of Alabama A&M, so mm -hmm. we want to welcome her back home. And we're so proud of her because uh, she is the Vice President for Human Resources with uh, Holly Davison. And so that's exciting. I, I keep wondering whether or not she's going to ride here on a Holly Davidson. Uh, uh, but, I was wondering, uh, a hog or bike? Now, yeah, so there's a difference. That, okay, there is a difference. <laughs> there's a okay, difference. there's yeah. a difference. But uh, but we're excited and pleased that um, that she's going to be our speaker. And so, uh, commencement is always exciting. Uh, I've said repeatedly there are two times of the year that I really, really love on a college campus. And the first is when our incoming freshmen come in the fall. And I love our commencement, be there in December or in May, because that then becomes the um, realization of the, of the work that our students have done. Mm -hmm. And they're able to achieve their objective. And we can, uh, again, recognize and congratulate them for a job well done. So uh, looking forward to it, again, rest. <laughs> rest, rest, uh, in order to be uh, ready for that. I do want to mention something else that's coming up on the 26th of April. That is Administrative Professional Day. Mm -hmm. And uh, we recognize that each year we uh, ask our supervisors to come along with their administrative professionals and we take the time to thank them for the work that they do and we provide them a little gift and a nice meal. Uh, to say thank you, um, because uh, in many instances, they're the face of the office. Mm -hmm. And uh, from from the time they answer the telephone to the people that they greet, uh, it's the face of Alabama a and University. And we want them to know that we certainly appreciate what they do, and this is our way of, of, of saying thank you. Most definitely. It's a full calendar there. And I do want to mention, uh, you talked about attorney uh, Bustani, Jocelyn Bustani, her mom, uh, Miss Bessie, Washington Jones was over uh, education department, oh. arts and fine arts department, and um, her dad, part of the tailgate area, is named after him, George okay. Jones. Okay. And uh, so that's her A&M connection, although she went to Spelman College, okay. but that's her A&M connection, I, and Very I like good. about Dr. Showers, he is sure. an A&M graduate. Mm -hmm. So we give back to them, we pull them back in, but they're already giving back. That's correct. That's and um, how, how huge do you see the slogan of start here go anywhere? I just think it's still growing, but it's definitely getting out there. It is. Um, it, 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 it has resonated. It has caught on. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's such an easy tagline to use, um, but, but it conveys a message. Um, and those, that, that very short phrase really conveys what we are all about. We're saying to people that 
sometimes when you think of institutions like Alabama A&M, you know, we're not in Alabama, we're not in Auburn, we're not a Harvard, we're not a Yale. So people think, well, you know, if you're from Alabama, Harvard, or Yale, here's where you can go. Mm-hmm. But we've been able to demonstrate that with a degree from this institution, from Alabama A&M University, you can go the same places that they can go. Mm-hmm. And so that's what the whole message of start here, and it doesn't say go It says go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So the sky is the limit as to what it is you can do. And we have examples after examples of persons who have demonstrated that with a degree here, there is no limit to what you can do. And so it continues to resonate, and and we will uh, continue to advance that that line. The other thing I wanted to mention that uh, took place today is our STEM day. Mm -hmm. Um, You know that as an institution, we produced the largest number of minority STEM majors in the state of Alabama. Um, And when you put that in perspective, you think about schools that are much larger, but yet we produce the largest number of minority STEM uh, majors in the state. Well, today we had STEM Day, and STEM Day is an opportunity for our students to to, uh, share their research and the projects that they're working on. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, I am always amazed uh, at the quality of uh, the research that our students are doing, the level of the research, the sophistication of that research, and their grasp of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And so it's a tribute to our students uh, that they, as early scientists and early researchers, have demonstrated that skill. But it's also a tribute to our faculty because uh, faculty is working with them Mm -hmm. uh, in order to develop the intellectual brain trust that we need for the future. And so STEM Day was great. uh, The piece that I always like is, is just going and moving around through all of the displays and I always tell them, look, tell me what you want to tell me in, in two seconds because I've, <laughs> co- I've got to cover the others. Uh-huh. And it's always difficult because they're so excited and I'm excited about what they're sharing with us. Mm-hmm. And so it was an- an- another great day um, mm-hmm. on the Hill. That's awesome. That is just incredible. And uh, Dr. Iraq has her, her SBIR, the Small Business Conference, is coming up. What is your thought on And One thing we talked about, again, was building the relationships between a and the community and uh, Mr. Tucker gave his take on that as well, especially with the Black Tie Gala and you wanting people, sponsors and, and corporations to be a partner with Alabama A&M. But when it comes to small business, how much of an impact is that on the A&M students in the A&M world? Well, uh, the, the, the business ownership is significant. You know, entrepreneurship is, is what drives the economy. And, and certainly when we uh, work with our students, we want them to not always think about going to work for company A or company B. We want them to begin to think about developing companies themselves mm-hmm. because the wealth in this nation, that wealth lies in business. That's where uh, that significant difference is. And so anything that we can do to push that envelope mm-hmm. uh, of business ownership and business development, you know, I go back to some of the I, some of the projects that I had the opportunity of seeing during STEM Day. Many of those have great potential that they might become some discovery that can be marketed and develop into, uh, into business. And mm-hmm. so we want our students to understand that that is an option as well. And so programs like the one that Dr. O'Ruck is going to uh, be sponsoring feeds into that and helps us again to, to move that uh, agenda for, for the university and to bring the larger community into uh, this whole notion mm-hmm. of economic development. All right, see what we're doing here. And I know you talk about students starting here, going anywhere. A friend of mine, I call her my little sister, Carla McAlpin, is an A&M grad and works with small business. And I'm almost positive her office is in the Pentagon. So she has moved on and is doing great things in helping people in that arena as well. Anything else that's coming forward that we want to share at this time, or we'll wait till we come back? We'll wait till we come back, but again, you know, it's always exciting here on the Hill. A lot of things are going on, and we 
uh, want to keep the dialogue open. This is probably the last one we'll be doing for this academic year. Uh, we'll, we'll be around for the summer, but um, we, we certainly uh, look forward to continuing this dialogue uh, into the next year. Most definitely. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Hugh Guinea. He's our 11th president here at Alabama A&M University. It's always a joy to talk with you here on the Presidential Community News from the Hill. And you have to give us your signature uh, closing. Yes, um, I always, I'm, I'm going to probably at some point um, just bring this with me and have it there. But we talk about hope because uh, that's that that is uh, at the end of the day what we have to hold on to and so uh, I give different variations of it depending upon what's going on at a given day but when we think about hope the first letter in hope being H and that is that we always to be high spirited don't let anything get us down there's a lot of stuff out there but don't let it get you down remain high spirited and then the other letter is O optimism always believing that tomorrow is going to be better than today mm -hmm. we just got to hang on in there and then with that, the next letter is P. P tells us to be persistent. Don't give up. But while you, in order not to give up, you must remain positive. And then the letter E tells us to remain encouraged. And then as an institution, we have to embrace change and embrace challenge. Because if we are not willing to embrace change, we won't continue to exist as an institution. So that's hope for us. That's hope. I love that. Can I add enthusiastic? And be enthusiastic. Be enthusiastic. Yes. Thank you very much. We appreciate you taking the time out and hope you have a wonderful summer. Maybe we can catch up at least maybe one time in Certainly. July. Certainly. And, uh, and then, of course, yeah, preview what's coming up in the faculty staff conference in fall semester. Wonderful. So thank you so very much, Dr. Hugini. You're welcome. Thank you again, Ms. Fox. This has been the Presidential Community News from the Hill with Dr. Hugh Guinea. Coming up, we have an update from NPR News, followed by its award-winning news magazine, All Things Considered, and more afternoon expressions.